Yo, welcome to another episode of the BJJ Goons Podcast. I'm your host, Tim, the Mushmaster Spriggs, and with me as always, every week, is... Yo, what's up everybody? It is Nico Ball, no new Nico. I am not the best in jiu-jitsu, but you know, I'm still here. I'm still here putting up with my favorite (laughs) co-host. What is up, Tim? What is up? We are... We are at a late night filming, so I hope you're not up to no good. I'm up to all good. I've I've been on my best behavior. I've been just living the dream right now. Uh, I went to IKEA. I got some lamps for my room. I got paint over to the side. Uh, about to do some home improvement sometime within the next couple of weeks you got paint what you paying i'm paying where's the paint like tim has been like over here flexing talking about oh i got muscles and da, 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 da. it's been taking us like 45 minutes to get filming i've been like, ready get to filming because no he has not been ready he's been looking at himself that's not true at all it is. behind the scenes it might be a all, everything was set up and for some reason the light the, the main light isn't on right now I mean, because it was good. You know how oh, the lighting is good. You know the lighting is right. good. I didn't even notice. We did a good job. Yeah. Um, it's just later than usual. Uh, everyone's just trying to get back in the groove of things because we've been gone for so long. You were gone for two weeks. We've been doing virtual. You were gone first. Don't put it on me. You were gone for two weeks first. You know? I've been gone more than I've been home. For I was gone for basically half of the last two months and then finally december happened and i'm able to settle in but i'm still living a crazy life yeah yeah but i'm glad to be home for a few weeks Uh, i'm gonna go on a seminar tour soon i don't know if it's a seminar tour if you only have one seminar booked tentatively where are you going Atlanta or no savannah i should be going to savannah soon that would be dope. I remember you had to push that off. We need to go to New York. What, Like the thing we were talking about before we started filming, that's in New York. So it's like, yeah. Do you think the plague will be super bad by the time we're able to get to New York? I don't um, think it will be. I... Yeah, that that is kind of <laughs> that is kind of crazy. Like COVID numbers are definitely going back up again. Like I have managed to get all the way to Brazil and back and tested negative every single time, thankfully. Um... But yeah, I know cl- schools and whatnot are closing down again. I'm schools just, are? Yeah. Gyms or actual school, school? School, people. school. So it's like, uh, just like when I'm trying to like get back into like being able to like train and recover. It's like, ah, uh, I was in a training bubble, but you know, I want to go back to TLI. I want to see Massaloid and whatnot. So it's like, I don't need to hear about more cases popping up. Yeah, that that that, that is kind of a bummer. I can't even front uh, I'm just glad I got a bag, a little bag, but with, before everything may shut down again. But who knows? This is America. We don't care about that type of shit. If the NBA and NFL is still going on strong, jiu-jitsu has nothing to worry about. I mean, I think even if we do shut down, we could still be, like, having underground randori fights. Like, that was the whole idea, was to be able to have, like, some super fights that were streamed uh, when you couldn't have public. Now we're going to be in, like, the Double Tree Hotel, which is January 22nd. Um, right before I'm going to slide out the country again, I'm going on another, this time, actual vacation vacation. To Brazil um, again? No, I'm going to the Dominican Republic. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I still got to pay for that trip. You know, that's going to be fun. So, you know, we're going to be, like, hustling up a little bit. So, you know, we're going to pimp Tim out in New York. So, you know, little trip to New York. <laughs> Talk to them about these shirts that uh, we just got. Yes, we definitely, the Interim These Nuts, <laughs> Interim These Nuts merch came in. And, like, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, I, like... <laughs> I make um, our merch, like, personally at home. So, like, I had, like, this yeah. shipping issue where I couldn't get sh- stuff shipped to my um, P.O. box. So, I had, like, somebody picking up all my stuff. And I was, like, I was in Brazil for two weeks. So, now it's, like, now that I'm back, we're about to have these on the store. We should have them up by, like, next week. What is it? What the fuck time is it? Yeah. So, like, next week. By the time you're hearing this, next week should be, like, these should be up next week. Um... But I was like, yo, they like the the transfer should have been here like on Monday, which was like literally the day I left for Brazil. 
And like I didn't, I waited till like the 14th to when they got back. And then somebody's like, yeah, yeah, I'll check. Like um, they might be at my house. And then they said like their sister thought they were school books or something like that. Like I was like, first of Word. all, they say like they say my name on it, Nico Ball. They say Favela Jiu Jitsu, and then they say the person like who, which is not his sister's name. And I was like, nah, if she opens that up, it's definitely not school books. It's something that says interim these nuts. <laughs> It's <laughs> like, so yes, we have the new interim, these nuts merch on for those of you that are listening to us and can't see us on YouTube. Both Tim and I are wearing the new shirts. So we got these and we got some dope a limited edition green BJJ Go- Goons hoodies. We're going to see how many we're actually going to release of that color and then we can be doing some black ones as well. So that's what's up. I think. White on black is an excellent combination. The best combination for a lot of different designs. <laughs> like like the violence between you and Gordon Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That is definitely a hate crime in the making. But uh, I think that it's important that you diversify. And these white on green BJJ Goons hoodies, I love them. I think it's unique. White on black is a dime a dozen when it comes to merch. Definitely podcast merch. But you can stick out like a sore thumb in a good way with a green BJJ Goons hoodie because green stands for that paper. You know what I'm talking about? The ducats, that money, green papers with dead hypocrites on them. That's what we're all about. Getting this money. (laughs) Speaking of getting this money... If you haven't already done so, make sure that you subscribe to the BJJ Goons Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash BJJ Goons. On the BJJ Goons Patreon, we have bonus episodes where we get real raunchy and dirty. You know, we talk about all types of shit. You know, we just had a podcast about BJJ Thoughts. Uh, We have podcasts about a whole bunch of different stuff. Bonus episodes also include extended versions of of the interviews that we have with people that dj jackson interview that we had we went super in depth the whole another hour hour and a half damn near two hours of content from that episode alone ricardo and mendolia as well for sure dope interview really dope you you get the (laughs) you get into the nitty-gritty of things but we don't just talk on there we show you stuff i show a lot of different techniques on the bjj goons patreon uh, I show, I do requests too. Like I really do requests. If any of our patrons ask me something specific, I go into detail. And what else do we have on the Patreon, Nico? Um, we've been doing town halls so that you can come and do like an interactive episode. We film like a normal episode, and you guys can hop in on the Zoom um, with us um, and talk and participate, which is really dope. That was fun. And, yeah, some of this merch that's coming out, you'll get, like, uh, first dibs on the merch when it comes out next week. Yeah, you won't be the first one in the hood with the BJJ Goons gear. But you know, in the suburbs, wherever you live, you know, we support every every social class. The hood is just not, like, the ghetto. <laughs> it's just, like, my hood. Uh, that's my hood, where I'm from, my neighborhood. The neighbor, <laughs> the neighborhood. Whichever, wherever you are. Oh, uh, with your Pomeranian, which is an, actually an adorable dog. Yeah, I love your dog. Yeah, she is very kind. Haley is, you know, the love of my life. You know, know even the name is very, like... Hmm? Even the name is very, like... Very, yeah, it's very beautiful. Majestic beast. But enough <laughs> about that. Let's talk a little bit about worlds. I feel like every other jujitsu podcast is going to talk about the same. Like, you know, we broke down who we thought we were going to win before. Right, Nico? We men bro- at least. I'm we- sorry, ladies. I'm sorry. <laughs> men at least. I wanted to talk about the ladies. We I had done research. So. Um, you no, know, but, you know, I'm not sexist, Okay. All right, I show love to the ladies. I even say a little bit. No, I'm just, oh, shit. Never mind. Maybe, Never mind. maybe. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Uh, any, if, if any woman. I'm sorry, wanna, don't mean to, Kim. Do not try to cancel. Do not try to cancel Tim. Yeah, if you bring me down, you're bringing a black woman down with me and Nico Ball. I'm not going with you. Like, no, <laughs> but we're we're linked entirely because this. this Until pop- you start going down and then I'm. <laughs> no. 
Oh, so you, I'm gonna do you like DJ did. <laughs> rats from a sinking ship. I'm gonna do you like DJ did, and See, I'm just gonna hey, catch no. you on that flight, hop that flight first. Be like, and then dip yeah. out that oh, there's a storm first. coming. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, Tim. Yeah, why didn't you I take the earlier the flight? I would have taken it if I had known. I learned from the best. I learned from the best. Well, Every man for himself, especially when traveling. Like, yo, TLI, the TLI travel policy. Yo, every man for themselves. Yeah, that is exactly true. For better or for worse. Get you get you that clear <laughs> and get you that pre check. Yo, we need a special Patreon episode where we talk about that one year at Pans. Uh, Back before the pandemic happened, those two years, like 2018, 2019, were so insane uh but speaking of these major tournaments you know i'm not sexist i show love to the ladies i still to this day believe that the best rivalry in jujitsu is between gabby Pasanya and yara it did not disappoint they are the two best women's grapplers but even before they could get to their their fight which was the 13th and the 14th fine that they for 13th and 14th time that they have fought, mm-hmm. they eliminated, like, they each eliminated Gabby Garcia, which I find hilarious. You think it's funny? I mean, like, yeah, because when we talk about, like, one of the best rivalries between the two of them, they fought so many times, and then somebody else tries to come in, and then, like, Yara submits her, and then, like, Gabby Pisana hits her with that classic City of the God collar drag, um, which came out on, like, jujitsu chips, where they, like, like, even spoofed it, like nobody's ever done anything like that to Gabby Garcia and like it's caused her to you know retire like now maybe not just that at the time it's that time you know how long has she been in the game it's like you gotta pay her her dues give her her flowers and let her walk off stage but like yeah like I feel like she was eliminated from their their rivalry like (laughs) all runs come to an end they do it's very interesting how it all ended too it was progressive it was a progressive one but because jujitsu isn't as active it, it's way more active now as far as major competitions and the best of the best going at each other but for the longest time it wasn't and gabby wasn't competing on the regular she wasn't on the war path as she may have been in the past True, true. She was doing MA, she was doing other things. We are talking about Garcia, correct? Yeah, Gabby yes, Garcia. Okay. okay. We're yeah. talking about the end of the era, not the beginning of one. Yes. So, All right. so yeah. yeah, she I mean, yeah. It's been she's been going through such high level training for so long on top of doing jujitsu and MMA and mixing it up, which is also very hard, you know, at some point, like you just have to slide on off into masters. I just noticed the skill difference. That has the the gap has been closed, and now she's been surpassed. If you had told me five years ago that she would get collar dragged to hell by somebody in their first year of black belt at world, I would have said you were insane. But I would have said you've never met Gabby Pisania. <laughs> yes, but even five years ago, like I would have never thought Gabby would have done her dirty like that. I would have figured Yara wouldn't have been able to submit her, her. But Gabby is a relic of the past. She was able to survive off of being tough, bigger, stronger, and dealing with the training environment that she had to deal with. She's from Alliance. She was under that tutelage. She, her career spans from... Damn near before Worlds was in America to now. Of course the gap is going to be closed. Of course you're going to see the evolution of the sport where these women, specifically Yara and Gabby Pasanya, even if they're big, they're very technical, they're very athletic, and they've just been watching Gabby for so long. And you just see it. It's kind of sad to see because Jiu-Jitsu doesn't have an old-timer's day. She's food now. And she started catching L's even way back 
when Mackenzie Dern beat her, I thought that was bogus when she won. But regardless, then she goes to who's number one and she loses. She gets her back, takes, she gets dominated. Her time is up. Who and did she lose to on who's number one? Amanda Levy. Oh, okay. Dang. She got she got her back. The only reason why I know that, I'm not trying to Because <laughs> you're the media. That's why there. you know that, Tim. I'm the media and I was there. Give yourself your flowers. I was there. Cut it off. Cut off. Cut off. Edit that. He knows this because he knows his shit. Yeah. Punto. Final. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's over for her. And there's nothing wrong with that. There she, isn't. There there's isn't. nothing. How do you think she'll be remembered, though? I mean, I think there's always going to be a lot of controversy around her being as big as she is, having her reputation, whether it's steroids, this and that. Like, she only won because she was huge. She should have been fighting men. Like, there's always that controversy. But, you know, like, she did, like, pave the way, like, for a lot of... I don't know. She did a lot of great things. And like you said, like she's from an amazing team. She's from Alliance. She is a student of Alliance. And she's just had an interesting career. Like BJJ Korea had a really dope post about it, telling like about all of her accomplishments, how many things, how many titles that she's won. So it is what it is. You got to pay her her respect and give her flowers for that. You need to give her her flowers because if you're gonna be mad at her for taking steroids or performance enhancers, you're gonna have a you're gonna have to hate a lot of people. <laughs> number one, number Fact. two, yeah, she's a big girl, but she can't really help it. If you're born giant, there's only so much you can do. I mean, you're a little person, Nico, so you wouldn't understand. No, I don't. I don't. But could you all. imagine if you're a girl that was just born big? Just big hands, big feet. You know, you're walking around like Andre the Giant trying to be feminine. And then you find a sport and you're good at it. And people hate you regardless. It can be hard. Like, there's a girl, Lara Bandera, from Ted Day Kids Project. And she's kind of big. And, like, she's lost a lot of weight. But, like, I remember her training with me one time. And her just being, like, so scared to hurt me. And, like... That meant, like, it kind of eliminated, like, a lot of people that she could train with in class. So, it's, like, it's very hard to want to, like, keep going and keep continuing. Like, she's only a blue belt now. And you think about, like, how many people stopped training at blue belt. Like, if she wasn't an amazing competitor and winning and had the support, like, it's very easy to be self-conscious, like, when you're that big. So, um, you know, kudos to the people that, like... They're just like, fuck it, <laughs> you know, like you, you learn to like not just be big, but have like technique and like not just have strength, but, you know, know how to finesse things. I think she'll be remembered as one of the greatest women's competitors or competitors of all time. Arguably the most dominant athlete we've seen in jujitsu. And just to put a bow on it, at the end of the day, big girls need love too. <laughs> They do. Slide in the Tim's DMs. But, you know, um, I heard a little rumor that uh, Yara might be needing, like, surgery. Like, she might be injured. Wow, really? Yes, I did. What's wrong that. with her? Uh, knee injury was a possible possible thing that I heard in the favela before I head back. Like, because I was, <laughs> I flew back, like, to the U.S., like, when Worlds ended. Everybody else is, like, flying to Brazil to, like, go to their graduations at their respective, like, projects mm. or academies. And I'm flying back to the U.S. So, like, yeah, that was one thing that, like, I heard that she had been, like, kind of dealing with an injury. So, I don't know. I'll have to hit her up. Um, because she unfortunately fell short. She got double silver. Gabi Pisanaya took home the gold in both um, weight and absolute and had an amazing interview with her coach on Flow Grappling, which was really dope um, because they went through and they were actually like translating stuff and putting the subtitles on. And a lot of times, like, you know, they don't do that. Um, it's just like, it's a lot of time and energy to do that. Like, the cost of it is not worth it. So to see them, like, you know, finally, finally, um, you know, giving, like, Marcio Dios his ups. Because a lot of people probably don't know about it. But, like, one of the reasons that I started Favela Jiu-Jitsu is because, like, Gabi Pisania's coach, Marcio, like, he was, like, chasing me around at Europeans because I was working for Flow Grappling. And he was just telling me about Gabby and how amazing she was when she was a blue belt. And a lot of people didn't want to write about her, like, not flow, not jujitsu, not, like, vice or anything. Um, so I made, like, my own outlet. But now, like, now Gabby Pisania's got, like, Flow Grappling, like, uh, translating shit, which is really dope. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. 
That's beautiful. I think it's cool that her coach believes in her in such an early phase in her career. That's one of the things that I want to be able to do. I don't know if I'll be able to, just the way things are turning out in my multiple careers. But in order, the ability to build someone up and make them into an animal. Someone. He's, he's been building, like, the, his, the, the ability of that man to take mad kids from the city of God Favela to worlds, to Europeans, to, like, I want to know where he's getting this money from. God, probably. Like, he's, he's also, like, a pastor blessings you know but like his it, like he grinds like he grinds every day for not just gabby but everybody and like when i tell you like and this is part of the footage i lost but like all of those kids are killer killer with that fucking collar drag like and it's just so dope to see like how so many of them like the and like i interviewed so many of them and they're like where their dream is to fight in like the the triangle and be like world champions and like how they really just like reflect her but like not just reflect her like oh i want to be like gabby they also have like that killer technique it's just dope and like so really big ups to marcio because like it was him and there was also another amazing interview with like jansen i don't know if you saw any of that stuff shout out to jansen gomez winner of a gold medal Brown belt is hard, man. I whenever I see brown belt, I know it's not the highest belt, but I just think about the grind that we had to go through. That grind from purple to black that separates guys that become all stars, superstars, legends, and guys that were just really good at jujitsu. A lot of people fall off. And for you to win a gold medal at Brown Belt is a major accomplishment. It sets you up for the next year. Don't get me wrong. Within the next year, these guys are going to have to put work in. But winning Brown Belt is a huge accomplishment. Because these guys are essentially full-time professional athlete grapplers. And a lot of them are very young. These people are in the prime of their lives. A lot of them have been training their entire life. No responsibilities. Entire life, entire life. And Jansen is one of those. Entire yes. life. Yes. So you're getting raw, uncut, f- phenomenal conditioning, athleticism, and their whole mind is focused on jujitsu. Jansen is a star, and he did the damn thing. I haven't seen the interview, though. I feel like it's going to be very good when I watch it. There's just like, um, there's clips of just like his father, like, because his father's a black belt, like, mm-hmm. from Checkmat. So. So, like, I work with Today Kids Project, which is in Cantagallo. And then Canta- Checkmat is at the base of Cantagallo as well. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know if a lot of people know. And, like, Copacabana. And they also used to have a social project mm-hmm. at the top, which is Cantagallo Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. And when the project split from Checkmat, like, Jansen and Jonathan's father had them stay with Checkmat because of, like, the opportunities it could give them. And, like, he's a black belt, too. So, and J- Jansen's older brother is a black belt, and now Jansen's a black belt. But, like, his father, there's just, like, a part where, like, Flo Grappling's, like, just filming him, and he's just, like, like pounding on his chest, and he's just, like, so hysterical and emotional. And it's just, like, I don't know. I've known Jansen and Jonathan and his father for a very long time, and then it's, like... We all know, like, a lot of shit that they've all been through. Like, I used to do highlights for them, and, like, they they used to pay for that shit of all the broke-ass motherfuckers, you know? Like, they were on their point. Like, they knew what was important, like, to get exposure. And then, like, I was with people in Rio, and they were talking about, like, um, um, that would get Jansen, like, free entry into tournaments so that he could pe- compete and stuff. So, you know, just, like, so many people that have helped, like, these kids, like, get to where they are, like... Um, I know he was trying to get his, like, um, athlete visa and stay in the U.S. before uh, quarantine hit, and then COVID came and he had to go back. So it's just so interesting to see people like that come up. Like, it's just like, damn, like, killed it in killer fashion, too, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It was, I think it, 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 it looked weird because there was so few people in the building. <laughs> that world's atmosphere Womp. And this, that, was, that was in Anaheim, right? Yeah, it was in Anaheim. It wasn't where it normally It's normally it wasn't Long in Beach, the pyramid. Right? The pyramid's in Long Beach, right? The pyramid is so great acoustically, the way it's designed, and the mats are on the ground in the middle. And 
the sound and everyone's looking down Mm -hmm. and there used to be so many people in there and i don't think it's just the plague i think it's just that gi isn't as popular and it just did not feel like the world's the gravity of the event it just felt so surreal watching I mean, it's true. It's like in December, like when just, the world just, is, it's, it's just like Nogi yeah. Worlds is in December, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's just it's, it's hard just for people. It's just, off. it's just off, and it's the holiday season essentially, and I think it threw a lot of guys off just because of the timing. For most of the year, we didn't even think we were gonna have worlds, and they're just dropping on us at the last minute, right before the holidays, like in between Christmas. <laughs> And Thanksgiving. They stacked it on. They definitely did. It's like... Just... Uh, mm. I mean, that, that's why... Everybody, and I feel... That's uh, why I was in Brazil. I wasn't even there. Like, normally I go and I do, like, uh, coverage for a world. It's mm-hmm. like... That's, like, the win competition I always work at. But, yeah, not even this year. And I, I feel... Miss out. And I miss, like... I, I haven't been able to get, like good um internet to even get the good replays and it doesn't even seem like christmas so it doesn't seem like worlds and it doesn't seem like christmas this year it doesn't feel like christmas because i'm an adult and i'm not excited i just have my own shit going on every day i'm getting a present this year right you got money a what i said i'm getting a present i'm looking at the checks i can see the fucking thirty thousand dollar check right nico, now it's what right do you to the want, right of me nico? i want a present like what do you want i'll uh, take some like perfume or something perfume yeah. nico you don't got a boyfriend you don't have groupies in your dms ask give you willing to give you something yeah we're going to new york i just told you we were just talking about this well <laughs> i do i do uh, yeah you do you need to hit him up you gotta use what you got to get what you want nico I have an amazing co-host. You got to use what you got to get what you want. I have want. an amazing co-host, Tim. I'm Re- looking at a check for $10,000 to my left. To I, my right. I felt blah at Worlds. I have a confession to make. I was paying attention to the results. Uh, you were in your feelings? You I was in my feelings because my boys lost. First and foremost, shout out to all the Team Lord Irvin people that did well this tournament. And all the guys that just showed up. Small team, big results. You know, we had Oscar medal. We had Karina win gold. We had Bree winning double gold. We had um, Corey Dorsey doing well in meddling. And, of course. He's going up through the ages. Like, he did that very well. Of course. We got Malachi Edmond and Jamil, Shane Jamil Hill Taylor making it to the finals hold on let's give them one at a time malachi edmund making his black belt debut first year at black belt worlds malachi edmund makes it to the finals i told y'all malachi was the shit i told you he was gonna make it to the finals i thought he was gonna win he lost but it's his first year at black belt he did incredible coming out the pandemic He, he did incredible um, he was on the show. I want to say we're trendsetters. He's like the first. We're the, his first major interview of many he's gonna have. I was very emotional when he won the semis. I was in the studio screaming at the top of my lungs, really about to cry. I told Nick. I think I messaged you like, "Yo, I was yeah, emotional right now," like, yeah. because I know how much sacrifices Malachi had to make. I know his career trajectory. I know even as a kid, he was overshadowed by his br- brother, Zay Zay. But still, Malachi loves jujitsu. Mm-hmm. He sacrifices so much. He's not just a competitor. He's a coach. He helps with the kids program. He is amazing. He, he teaches. He do- Man, he even presses people's geese with patches. He helps with the summer camp. He's an all-around solid dude. Phenomenal hair, too. And former child model. Like Malachi, yes. Wow, was that English? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. so I'm gonna let it slide because you're. In your, we need to like uh, hit his mama up for some pictures. Uh, yo, yo. I, and you know he did an excellent job, even in defeat. He fought like a soldier. Jamil, he he lost as well in the finals. But he beat his nemesis Kennedy. He did beat Kennedy. He was in control. He lost in the finals. You know, and I'm, I was bummed. After I saw them lose, 
my lady friend I was with, I was like, you know, I don't want to watch this anymore. I'm going to just watch BMF and cuddle because I'm sick. We need to get the intern to edit out that part about your lady friend. That's going to fuck up our ratings. Your I'm just ratings. playing. Um, you need to be eternally single, Tim. Slide I'm eternally into the single. Later. I have a late, just because I have a lady friend DMs. doesn't mean I'm, that, that doesn't mean I, I, it's, I'm cuffed. It's not good for the I have ratings. a lady friend. It's not, it's not good for the ratings. Hey, listen. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't I'm hear that because we don't have an intern. So just pretend you didn't hear that. They don't hear call that. me Jits Bay for no reason. Like, Strike it. All I'm gonna say is that I was very sad when I saw them lose, and it put me in a foul mood. Yeah, yeah, no. I didn't want to watch no more. I was sick it's because I know how much they have to grind. Here's the thing about the team that I don't think people really appreciate or just don't know, and I really appreciate about the team. Everyone on the team has a life, and what I mean by that is. Everyone has other responsibilities. We're not sugar babies where somebody just takes care of us and pays our way. We don't have a great deal where we have a billionaire or somebody with money to fund our lifestyle. And that's not, that's not a dig. You know, we, we just don't have the support where we can just do jujitsu and not have to worry about what's going on in the real world. And we're in the DMV. D.C., Maryland, Virginia, specifically P.G. County. A lot of us are Howard County. And we have to hustle. We have to grind. Like, it's not glamorous. We're not in a jujitsu hotbed. Uh, I was in Austin recently, and a lot of gyms are there because there's so much wealth in Austin, Texas. I mean, yeah. And it's so many people that like jujitsu there. It's just a jujitsu hotbed. You could be an absolute no name person and still get a bag just teaching private lessons off the strength of you just knowing jujitsu in other places we're not in socal shit we're not in brazil we're in the middle of nowhere if you're not from maryland i'm pretty sure you can't pick maryland out on a map i bet most people don't even know dc is inside of maryland literally inside and we bring out the best it is I mean, it's not like in the state of Maryland, technically. What do you mean, geographically speaking? It's inside. It's like in the little. It's in the belly of Maryland. It's literally in the belly. <laughs> All right, it's literally in like so the like, little. I just the don't want mouth. people to think that you think that like DC is part of Maryland, but DC it's not. Is not a state. It's okay. not, but it it's inside, physically like, inside, located within. Yeah. You could Anybody's like walk. For like There's, PR, obviously, I'm good at that shit. You could literally drive within two minutes from D.C. to Maryland to Virginia. You can. You There's could. like one section of like 95. And all of like, the gun laws in all three of those places are different. Such all three area. of them are different. But I, nonetheless, small team, big results. We come from the small place called Maryland. And we bring out the best of the best. We had two African-American men in the finals of Jiu-Jitsu Worlds. Not just like, okay, they're American. That's a major accomplishment in and of itself. But they're black kids from Maryland, a non jujitsu hotbed. And they're just regular dudes. And I know them. And I'm proud to know them. And I'm proud to have been able, I'm happy to have been able to see their development as athletes. And I'm excited because the future is so bright for them. And. Even in unideal circumstances, they were still able to rise to the occasion. But, man, I was bummed. And I was upset. Not as upset as I was seeing this other very controversial event. But before we do that and finish up the show, I just want to shout out two sponsors that we have. Cliffhanger. Uh, First, I want to say shout out to John's Fit Meals. They're a meal prep company. They make homemade meals for you. They are one of the best. No, they, they, they are the best meal prep company that I've ever used. And I'm a professional athlete, if you don't know. I'm actually the. I didn't. I didn't. I, how the, long have you been a professional athlete for? Oh, most of my life, actually. And for the how last long have time you been I've, feeding yourself for? Um, no comment. But they make it so much easier because I don't have to think about it. So I just go online to John's fit meals. Tim's trying to act like his muscles are his muscles, his muscles. Cause he got meal prep now. Like <laughs> I go so to John's, John's fit meals. meals. 
You know, they're handmade. They don't just give you some freeze-dried shit like you go to McDonald's. There's actual gourmet chefs that make the meals, package them for you, put them in little packages, deliver them either to your workplace or to your house, and you have meals for the week. Did not mention they are normal-sized chefs. Gourmet, I didn't say midget. You said little gourmet chefs, but I'm just trying to emphasize gourmet. the fact that they're not little chefs. No, we know, don't. they're, they're not ratatouilles. Dishes, they're not little like, ratatouilles. You know, we're not, we're actually, not exploring little people. No, no, <laughs> they're not. They're regular size gourmet chefs that make the meals for you, deliver them to your home, and you got meals for the week. You go online every week. You have a full menu of fresh food that they create for you. For your needs, you can specify what you need. I'm an athlete, so I tell them that I need, I go for the athletic options that they have on the website. They hook a brother up, and as you can see, I'm big and strong like bull. So make sure you guys go to John's Fit Meals. Yeah, and if you want to agree. And use promo code BJJ Goons. What were you going to say, Nico? <laughs> I was like, a segue into the next one. If you would like to create your own website, hopefully not complaining about Tim and how he's flexing on his muscles and his accent, where <laughs> can they go? <laughs> you can go to Blue Edge Business. Go to blueedgebusiness.com. They have all your digital marketing and web design needs. They will get met. As you can see at timspriggsbjj.com. They revamped my website. My website was janky. I was using a whole bunch of bullshit. But I finally hit up Blue Edge Business Solutions. And they gave me the best website in the business. And they can do the same for you. Just make sure you tell them that Tim Spriggs sent you for a very special discount. What's so funny, Nico? I don't know. You just killed me with the accents. And then, I don't know. Maybe it's the movies and the jet lag that I watched on the plane. But Blue Edge Business Solutions, you know, it sound like they're going to, like, clean out, you know, like a dead body or something. Like, you know, you got that soprano swag going on right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we drop an ad. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Officially speaking, Blue Edge Business cannot clean up any dead bodies or cover up any crimes that you can commit. But your SEO, they can clean up your SEO. They right? can definitely clean up your SEO. Bad. Best believe. Um, but like I was saying, Nico, before we went into the ad reads, the biggest controversy of this year's worlds was the Nicholas Marigali incident. Uh... Can you describe what happened to the to to poor Nicholas? Well, poor Nicholas, he was like he was doing his little guard thing, like he be doing. Nobody was passing his guard. He was all right. All right. He was all right. He was all, right. all right. He might be he the best. Doing all right. And then he regard. heard a little something, something off on the sidelines and tried to flip him the bird, like we all do it. It's Shanji and Salo reportedly. They were talking mad shit. The was whole it Shanji and Salo? He all right. Here's the thing, I, I you know I will never feel sorry for like a blonde haired blue eyed guy. The white boy, the white boy who says, and this is what gets me. He says in the interview, "I knew the rules, I just didn't think the rules would apply to me." Yeah, that is that is uh, that is very Yakubian. <laughs> uh, th- that is very Aryan. <laughs> like, that, like same thing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just want to get all the adjectives out, you know, the synonyms. We want to get all the synonyms. Our third so eyes it's are just open like, here on you know, BJJ Goons. You know, <laughs> you know, you can get like disqualified for dancing. Like, of course, you're gonna get disqualified for flipping somebody. Like, oh, you knew the rules, son. Like, at least, at least, say you didn't know it was a rule. Don't say you knew it was a rule, but you didn't think it would apply to you because, what, you a black belt and you was in the finals or semifinals? Like, you thought it wouldn't apply to you? Yo, are you done, Nico? Yes. That is bullshit. Not what you're saying is bullshit. I understand your argument. I just feel as though... Heathens should be heathens? Yes. (laughs) Why? Heathens should be heathens. Why are we pretending like this is some kind of choir... Like, this is some kind of church retreat. These people that do these tournaments, we're coming out there to fuck each other up. I am training year-round to strangle you with your own clothing or to break an arm or leg. 
That's what I'm training to do. And you know what most of the guys at the Bible level do? They take performance enhancing drugs. They put them in syringes, shoot them in their booty so they can train even harder and longer to try to kill another person. And do they have drug tests at the Black Boat? level no. at worlds at worlds do they, not no. know? do they not know i thought oh they were, like, i'm sorry they do i'm sorry worlds. they do drug test nico but you know what's interesting they know when worlds is gonna be so it's not even a drug test it's an iq test people okay you but know just when the test is coming just because you're mad that they can't pop people for like steroids doesn't mean like they should be able to just do whatever the fuck they want and flip people off too. So like What does flipping somebody off have to do with the outcome of a match? I mean, it's just against the rule. It's like what is Why dancing? Is that a rule? Like how come how come if at the end of a match if you dance or you celebrate too much, why can't you get because it's stupid. They're trying but to make. You can, they're but trying like you to can, mo- and it's happened. It's happened to people. You, it's happened I don't. To people like that today. As like, a matter, so of, if you know what the rules are. As a matter of principle, I don't believe that you should be able to penalize someone and take a win away from them for excessive celebration, flipping somebody off, doing things that have nothing to do with the outcome of the match. If you get an illegal grip, yes, you should get doctor point. If you punch somebody in the nose, you should be uh, DQ. If you bite somebody, which I've been bitten in the middle of a match before, the person didn't get DQ'd. I almost got DQ'd for kicking too much of his too too much ass. That's how much I I I hate these stupid ass rules. I mean, but like that's because you didn't get seen being bitten. Like if somebody had seen that, I that's said like, he bit me and I showed it like, on my hand, Nico. Okay, mm. Nico. My whole thing is we are in a sport which is. There is no honor in jujitsu. There is none. So then you're saying you should be able to bite and flip people off no, and do this no. and that. No, like, I say that's, I that's I hate this in regular sports when they say, "Oh, you get a technical or you get a 15 yard penalty for excessive celebration." That shit is dumb. This is a sport at the end of the day. You you doing a move where it's illegal? You doing illegal shit in a match like you're cheating? Yes, but celebration, talking shit to a fan, flipping them off. Dancing after the match. I don't give a fuck if you take your guitar off and jump in the crowd. You won the match. You won the match. I mean, you but won. then like people want to be in the Olympics and they want to be paid and they want to be more professional. It's like, you know, like things like that when like you're trying to get paid or you're trying to be on TV. And, fuck like, you the Olympics, the yo. Tra- uh, all, yeah, I mean, uh, Olympic gymnastics, them girls just like had to shoot them. You're going to get... Look, all right. When Nate Diaz f- flipped the bird, the double bird, when he had somebody in a full blown triangle, did he get disqualified from the match? Uh, was he at IBJJF? Or it, was he? He was in a fight. Was he in IBJJF? I don't like the rule. All right. But just because you don't like the rule, that's just shirt, like saying, I don't my, like that two plus two is four. That's different, Nico. No, you it's know not. It's the, like, if you know two plus two like, I mean, but like, come on, just Nico. Like, even, two plus- IBJJF, like, you're not even allowed to, like, um, penetrate orifices. That's a rule. You can't penetrate orifices. But that's cheating. That's that that's has not a nothing. Rule. That has nothing to do with cheating. cheating. That's a fucking rule. You if can't I penetrate orifices. If I put my finger in somebody's and booty, there's no obscene gestures. A- there's no obscene gestures, and there's no penetrating orifices. You can't do one that's or not the, the other. Same level. You're not allowed to slam. They're the rules. They're in the same fucking book. It doesn't matter if they're in the same level. I they're in the same fucking book. They're in the same fucking book. Checking another And especially as a black person, they're gonna throw the fucking shit at your head the same fucking way. So yeah. Yeah. Goodbye, Marigali. <laughs> Goodbye. It's the no fun league in IBJJF. IBJJF is no fun. That's why everyone wants to watch it's other shit. It's supposed to be fun. Like, it's supposed to be prestigious. Prestigious? Prestigious. What is, what's prestigious about it? Um, The title, the world. It's like, it's a world champion. IBJJF. All right, let's keep it 100. Let's keep it 100. Just because we've had two beers doesn't make it any less like the world. It's supposed to be the prestigious, like, stuck up title like that's what it is supposed that's to be up, like it's not ABCC. BS it's not like gritty it's not, not nitty, nitty gritty it's not like they're gonna pay you it's like debutantes like it's like an unpaid internship type bullshit shit like that is why the, the arena wasn't even a quarter it's of the like, way full i mean the pandemic and like people dying as well but like you know i went to a ma- fucking wu-tang concert that was packed to the brim you telling me when? we 
a few weeks ago. Yeah, you didn't tell me about it. I love you didn't know that Ghostface was in town. I love you weren't here. I think you were. Wow, here. I go you by the Crossface Killer, and this is when I'm a I'm a pull the fucking bike off this fucking table, drop it, and walk out. What time is it? Are we done? It's forty five minutes. Peace, yo. This has been another episode of the <laughs> News Podcast. Nika, where can we find you besides the Wu-Tang concert that you missed? Oh, you obviously. <laughs> where can we Give me the shirt back. Give me the shirt back. Why? Yo, oh, on Instagram. On, on Instagram. Y'all can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Hear me cussing him out on my live later tonight at no new Nico. That's no <laughs> underscore new underscore nico wow tim wow i'm gonna just like hit it i'm gonna just hit the microphone i'm gonna break the shit because i know you got 30k and you can replace it i'm trying to keep my thirty thousand. where can they find you then tim well you can find me where the money resides but in all <laughs> well no really you can find me where the money resides but besides that you can find me at tim spriggs bjj.com you know the website that was created by blue edge business where you can get a private lesson from me either in person or virtually you can also get a match critique where i watch your match and i break down the footage in real time and give you cliff notes as to what you can improve upon and give you video examples from world-class competitors and you can even book me for a seminar at timsbriggsbjj.com please Get me and book me ASAP before the plague takes over again. Also, you can find me at Tim Spriggs BJJ on Facebook or on Instagram. Huh? Uh, on Facebook or Instagram. I only really use Instagram, and I'm trying to stop using it. But if you do hit me up on Instagram, give me a follow. When I post, give me four letters in the comments. I mean, sorry, four words in the comments for engagement. And ask Instagram, why the Fuck, doesn't Tim Spriggs have a blue check? Guys, gals, non-binary people, this has been another episode of the BJJ Goons Podcast. Make sure you guys stay safe. Thanks for rolling with us. Peace. Oh, so Wu-Tang just came to town and you just wasn't going to say nothing? My bad. <laughs>